Alright, I'm gonna make this very quick. But before I do that, I just want to change up the tiers real quick. So at the top, we have Broken. Next, we have Very Good. And after that, we have Good. And I guess we'll also put Trash. And the reason I'm doing it this way is because I genuinely think uh, every survivor in this game is actually pretty good and pretty viable to play, except for one which I'll get to later. So yeah, I think you can beat Eclipse 8 if you pick any survivor, and you can get consistent runs with any of them if you practice them enough. Also, this is just my opinion. Obviously, my opinion isn't completely factual, and uh, what determines whether a survivor is good or not is all subjective. And with that being said, let's start off with Acrid, who I'm going to put in very good because Poison brings everything down to 1 HP, Poison does percentage-based damage, and really the only thing you need are a few mobility items and something to kill off enemies once they get to 1 HP. Pretty good survivor. Next up is Artificer, who I think is also very good, simply because stalling in the air is very important in Rescue of Rain 2, and the fact that you can just do that for free with Ion Surge is uh, pretty good. And on top of that, you also have freeze and decent damage. Bandit also goes in very good. Desperado stacking, need I say more? <laughs> he has alright mobility, and his primary skill is also really good when combined with the fact that he has a passive skill, which makes targeting enemies from behind do crit damage. Alright, next is Captain, who I'm gonna put in good. As much as I'd want to think that he's very good, I just don't think he is with the lack of mobility. But that being said, he is definitely at the very top of good, if not the bottom of very good. I'm still a little torn between that. Because even though he lacks mobility, he still has one of the best primaries in the game. He has speed shooting, which is very broken. And even though he lacks mobility, I think Orbital Strikes and Diablo at the very least make up for it, because those are very good skills. And Beacons as well are very versatile. Shock Beacons can stall enemies indefinitely. Heal Beacons are pretty good if you don't have any healing items. And hacking beacons can just accelerate the speed at which you get items in a run. Pretty good. In Commando, I'm also going to put in good. Definitely a lot less good than Captain, but I'd still put him in the same tier nonetheless. See, I actually used to think Commando was trash, but then after I unlocked his alternate skills, he actually seemed viable to play. Slide gave a lot of mobility. Grenades gave a decent amount of burst damage. And his secondary skill also did a decent amount of damage. So yeah, I think he's a little more reliant on items as opposed to most survivors in this game, but I still think he's pretty good and you can definitely get really consistent with him. For Engineer, I'm gonna put him in very good. Even though he lacks mobility, turrets more than make up for it. Turrets are broken. You can place them inside walls, they can be invincible. And your lack of mobility honestly doesn't really matter too much because your turrets can just draw aggro for pretty much the whole time. And you definitely don't need as much luck as you do for Commando to get a pretty nice run going. For Heretic, I'm gonna put in good. Heretic just has some good stats, decent moves, a lot of health, pretty helpful. I've never really played Heretic that much since I don't really use Lunars, but as far as I'm aware, Heretic's not trash. Alright, for Huntress, I'm also gonna put in very good. Mobility in this game is very important, it allows you to get items faster, avoid attacks better, and it's avoiding attacks that matter more in this game than protection. Because why get protection if you just won't get hit at all? And Huntress is one of the best survivors at doing that. Also, her primary skill is good at starting proc chains. Her secondary skill, Glaive, is very good at crowd control. And Ballista is very, very nice amount of burst damage, which also procs bans. So yeah, very good survivor. Good moves, great mobility, which is uh, very important in a survivor. Alright, for Loader... This is going to be the first survivor I would classify as broken. You take out everything in one punch as soon as you learn how to play this character. A few crowbars, a few watches, bands, and suddenly everything is dead. For Merc, I'm going to put him in good. I'd say he's somewhere around where Captain is, where he's like borderline very good. The only reason I don't think he's as good as like Artifice or Accurate is because he's at the end of the day a melee survivor, which I don't think are as good as survivors that have range. Of course he has slicing winds, but I mean, it's like one move, dude. But his mobility is kind of insane. 
Focus is a really good passive to have, and he does a lot of damage. So yeah, even though he's in a similar boat as Huntress, the fact that he has to get close to do damage, unless you're running Slicing Winds, is uh, pretty detrimental. But that doesn't stop him from being a good survivor. Or multi... Uh... I'll put multi in good. Yeah, I'm not sure. Okay, actually, you know what? I'm gonna put a rover in between. The fact that I have this many toss-ups is uh, pretty questionable because I do think these three characters are better than Commando by a considerable amount. But that doesn't mean I think Commando is anything less than good. Yeah, actually, I think this makes a lot more sense. Yeah, these three are pretty good, but are definitely better than Commando in my eyes. But that doesn't mean Commando is trash. Alright, next is Railgunner, who I'm also going to put in Broken. I mean, you can one-shot everything. It's like Loader, but with range. Of course, this character is kind of high execution, but if you can do it, you're pretty much one-shotting almost everything in the game. Alright, next is Rex, who is the only character that I think is trash. <laughs> Oh, and I'm kind of biased towards Eclipse 8 since that is the game mode that I primarily play now. So yeah, Rex, it's a, it's a pretty cool idea for a character. You know, your health bar is kind of like your mana bar. It's what limits what you do. It limits what actions you can take or how much you can commit towards something. But the fact that health is such an important resource in Eclipse that you just don't get back once you reach Eclipse 8, it's... uh. It's not really something you want to meddle with. And the fact that using health as his resource is the only thing that Rex has is uh, not good. His primary isn't the best. He has no mobility. He does have a few niche things like insta-killing Awu, but I don't think that makes up for how bad he is, at least in Eclipse. And last we have Void Fiend, who I also think is broken. You don't need that many items to succeed with Void Fiend because pretty much every item in the game synergizes pretty well with Void Fiend. Void Fiend has a pretty good primary, good at starting proc chains, slows enemies down, and once you transform, that primary all of a sudden does good burst damage. Your secondary also does good burst damage, your mobility isn't half bad, and you have pretty much an infinite resource for health. And it's because you have so many options in your toolkit that so many items synergize with Void Fiend, and because of those synergies, I'd consider Void Fiend one of the best survivors in this game. But the thing is, I haven't actually ordered these, so I'm gonna go do that now. I think Void Fiend is the most broken, followed by Loader, then Railgunner. Then for very good, I would put Engineer first, he's pretty good. It's not that hard to get a good run going with him. Then I'd do Huntress, because mobility is very important. And then Acrid because he can poison everything. Then Bandit because Desperado stacking is really insanely good. And then Artificer. Then for pretty good. Honestly, I'm not really sure how to order these three. I think these three are around the same range of how good they are. Maybe I'll put Multi first. Then Cap, then Merc. But I that doesn't seem right because I also think Merc is pretty good. I would say these three are pretty interchangeable. Then for good. But Heretic first. Amanda was just not that guy. I'm sorry. But that doesn't mean he's bad. He's he's still good. So yeah, here's my tier list. I think every survivor in this game is viable, and if you practice enough, you can get consistent with any of them. Except for Rex, because he just sucks. 